Welcome back to Study with Grace, a Bible study of biblical truth. Remember, this class is not church. Church, church. Where we dialogue up in here. This is not a monologue. This is not something you're accustomed to. You got to have an understanding of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You got to truly know what this cross really means. Why did he hang on this tree? Jesus hung on that tree to take the propitiation of the wrath of God. In the tribulation period, Jesus Christ pours down 21 judgments of his wrath on earth. So Jesus saved us from that wrath. But it don't stop there. You're forgetting the most important thing. God raised him from the dead. He is God. And when he rose from the dead, your sins got atoned for. Y'all see how important this resurrection is? Christ rose from the dead. And he poured out his spirit on our flesh. So it's our job to share the gospel. So it's your job, my job, everybody in here job, to know about Jesus' dead, burial, and resurrection. And not only know, but share it. Share it. Share it. All right. Welcome back to Study with Grace. This is a Bible study of biblical truth. How y'all doing? Y'all doing pretty good? How many of y'all went back and studied part one of the end days of our lives, the binding of Satan for a thousand years? How many of y'all went back and studied that? One. All right. This is class. This is not church. This is a Bible study of biblical truth. This is not church. Do you understand? We are talking about and discussing our end times timeline. All right. We're going over the most pivotal moments during the end days. Do you understand? The Bible speak of 12 critical and very important moments that's going to take place during the end days. All right. And I have it here listed on the board. And we going down each critical moment during the end days. And right now we are on part two of the binding of Satan. <laughs> go back to my Facebook timeline and go to our YouTube channel subscribe click the notification bell so every time we upload a teaching right on the video you'll be alerted you understand me alright now then we're going to get this thing together and we're going to continue our curriculum who got questions I feel a lot of questions going to come this way today. Viewers, welcome to class. You should have your Bible. You should have your notes. You should have your notepad. You should, you should have your pencil and your Apple pencil. It don't matter. Have your crayon and your Sharpie. You're going to take notes. This is a Bible study. Bible chapter verse dispensated. That's how we read the scriptures. We read them dispensationally. Y'all all right today? All right. Here's the most important thing I can tell you so far. This right here. Y'all see that? What does that mean? What, what does it represent? Let's talk in the mic. What does that cross represent? That cross represents Jesus Christ's death. Jesus Christ's death? He did for us. What he did for us? Okay. All right. Anybody else? Nobody else know what that cross mean. You got to be kidding me. Same thing Alexis said, the DBR of Jesus Christ. The DBR of Jesus Christ? Death, burial, and resurrection. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's what this mean? I thought it mean, you know, Put some diamonds on it and, and, and put it at the end of a necklace. That ain't what that mean? Huh? The cross of Jesus Christ is everything. You understand? 
Have y'all ever lied before? Who in here has just told one lie in their life? One. Raise your hand. Who has told at least one lie in your life? That's right, the DBR. That's right, the DBR. Viewers, how many of y'all have told at least one lie in your life? I'm, I'm getting ready to let you know what this cross means. Trelisha says, I have one lie. So if you told one lie, guess what? Matt said a billion. Lauren said, I know I have. So if you told one lie, guess what that means? Guess what you are? No, guess what you are? A liar. Say it in the mic. You a liar. You a liar and the truth ain't in you. Straight up. If you told one lie in your life, you are a liar. I don't care how much you done stop lying. Oh, I don't lie. You lie too much. Oh, you, you a liar right along with the person that lie too much. <laughs> Y'all understand me? Shawanda leaks. she said, I ain't, I've lied before. Because I'm trying to help you understand what this cross means. Because some of y'all really don't really know and really have no idea what this means. You think the sinner is the person that murdered the cop or that broke into the house and stole everything. Uh-uh. I'm going to describe what this cross means. So you are a liar, right? Let me ask y'all this. How many of y'all, y'all ready? How many of y'all has ever stolen something? It could be the smallest thing. A pen on the table, a piece of paper you didn't ask. You didn't ask permission to get the item you got. Who that represents? Oh. So everybody in here done stole something. I don't care if it was a million dollars or if it was you went in the kitchen and, and, and got a, a juice box out the refrigerator. You didn't get permission. Guess what you did? You stole it. Buells, how many of y'all done stole something? I don't care if it's great or small. Does that represent you? Does that represent y'all? Yeah. yeah, okay. So guess what? If you stole something, guess what that means? You a thief. How you spell that? T-H what? You a thief. I E F. Hey, how y'all how y'all messed that up? I asked for help. I E F. You are a thief. Take the T off. There it is. You a lying thief. <laughs> I'm trying to tell y'all. And show y'all the importance of this cross. A lot of y'all really have no idea what this means. None. You think because you're a good person and you do the right things, right? You nice to folks, right? You tell them you love them, right? You do all these little good moral law-abiding citizen moves, right? So you think that you're not a lying thief. Huh? Y'all understand? You sure? How many of y'all done killed somebody before? Raise your hand. How many of y'all have actually murdered somebody? Killed them? Nobody? You still lying? Because, okay, let me ask you this. Have you ever been angry at your brother or sister? Have you ever been angry at your brother or sister? Buells. <laughs> Have you ever been angry at your brother or sister before? Yes. You have? Yes. Guess what you have done? Murder. The Bible say if you have any anger towards your brother or sister, guess what you have done? 
You have murdered them. So guess what you are? <laughs> you are a murderer. You are a lying, thieving murderer. And you think you good. Because you ain't missed a day in school. Deja say, yes, I've been angry. De uh, uh, Lauren say, I mean, Lauren said, yes, I've been angry. Deja say, yes, yes. Guess what? You are a murderer. Jesus said, if you have any anger in your heart towards your brother or sister, you have murdered them. Are you aware of that? I'm trying to show you the significance of this cross so you can stop putting diamonds on it and wear it as a chain and think you good. You hear me? Now watch this. Have you ever looked at a man or a woman in a lustful way? Oh, he fine. She fine. I want to knock her off. I want to knock him off. <laughs> Have you looked at a woman or a man in a lustful way in your life? One time. That's all it takes is once. Yeah. Yeah. Have you looked at your cell phone in the middle of the night down TikTok looking at them girls? Huh? <laughs> looking at them boys. <laughs> all on YouTube shorts. All on IG reels. <laughs> huh? Guess what you have done? You have now committed what? Adultery in the heart. You have now fornicated in the heart. So you are no longer a what? You are no longer a virgin. <laughs> so now you are a lying, thieving murderer who has committed adultery and ain't even married. You ain't even married yet. You are a lying, thieving murderer who has committed adultery and you ain't even been married. Watch this. God is so good that not even one, not even one of these inquiries, right? cannot inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you committed one of these things, lying, thieving, murder, uh, um, adultery, go, it's more than that. I'm just giving you a few for the sake of time. If you committed, a, if you ever lied, ever stole something, if you ever was angry at somebody or actually physically committed murder, murder or, or adultery in your heart, lusting after a woman or man, these acts cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You understand that? I don't care how good you think you is. You're not good. You're bad. You're terrible. Stop pretending. Stop moving around like you got it like that because you don't. None of us do. I'm trying to show you the importance of this cross. And I'm going to show you how good God is. God know that we are going to accomplish these things at 100%. <laughs> he know that we're going to lie and still going to steal and have sex when we're not married, right? Or have sex when you're married or same-sex marriage. None of it's good. <laughs> None of the, watch this, none of those things can inherit the kingdom of heaven. That's how good God is. Not one. Matter of fact, God told Adam, don't eat from the forbidden tree. Don't eat the fruit from the, you know, don't eat the forbidden fruit off the tree. All Adam did was took a bite. He didn't finish the whole uh, fruit. And God punished them immediately. Now we all die. Dude didn't eat the whole fruit. He didn't get to finish it. <laughs> huh? That's how good God is. 
So watch this. God then said, you know what? I love y'all. I know you ain't no good, but I love you. Let me talk to my son real quick and see if he going to do something for me. His son being Jesus Christ. So he got together with Jesus Christ, right? The Holy Spirit being the counselor. And he said, son, I need you to go down there as a man. Make yourself a little lower than the angels and go down to earth as a man. And I need you to walk the earth perfectly as a man. And when you do it, at the right appointed time on my schedule, I need you to sacrifice yourself for the whole world, for the lies, the thieving, the murderers. And if you do that, your blood, if, if, if these folks, the murderers, the thieves, if they will believe in you, have faith in your blood, I will blot their sins clean through your blood so they can have everlasting life with us. Will you do that for me, son? Jesus said, I will. Because I love you, dad. And not only you, I also love them. So I'll go and die for that thief. I'll go and die for that murderer. I'll go and die for all the TikTok scrolling. I'll go and die for all the sexual penetration. but they got to put their faith in me. They got to believe in what I did. They got to believe that my blood is significant enough to atone for all their evil pleasures and evil ways. If they don't come to me, I don't care how good they have been in their life. They will go to hell. You understand that? The Bible say that, that God was pleased. He was pleased. Watch this, Darion. He was pleased to crush his own son. That pleased him. Are y'all aware of that? Why was God pleased to crush his own son? Because Jesus Christ, he did what? He hung on his cross and got treated as if he lied, stole, murderer. Now, he didn't do it, but he got treated as though he did for us. So God was pleased to crush his own son because his son was hanging on a cross to bore the iniquities, the wickedness of who? Of us. So don't you dare have the audacity to look down on somebody because you think you better or you do this better or you're in your eyes good. No, you're not. You're bad, just like me. In desperate need of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And if you don't run to the cross of Jesus Christ, you're going to be in damnation. You're going to be in hell. Because God got to punish. He's just. See, when there's good, when somebody's good, there's what? They what? They're just. When somebody is good, they're just. They can't turn a shoulder to the bad stuff like we do. Oh, it's okay. Don't, it, it's okay. You messed up. That's fine. Now, God, he going to deal with that sin. That's how God operates. He's that good. He don't tolerate no sin, no error, zero. That's why you need Christ, the one who had no error. The perfect sacrifice on our behalf. God manifested in the flesh as a man, like you and I, a human. Got hungry, tired, God. And he got on this tree and he hung there so many could be saved from God's wrath which is what we learn in the end days of our lives, his 21 judgments. If you don't put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you don't have faith in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will die.
Do you hear me? Because you just admitted that you're a liar. And no liar would inherit the kingdom of heaven. Not one. You can't save yourself. Your ways can't save yourself. Your money can't save yourself. When you die, you die broke. Wherever you're going to go, you're going to be broke. Because you can't take nothing with you. The Bible say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1 through 4, God, watch this. Jesus, guess what he did? He died on the cross for our sins, according to the scriptures. He was then buried. You understand that? He was then buried. Guess what he did on the third day? He then rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. Do y'all understand this? Jesus died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. Then he was buried. Then he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. When he rose, when he rose from the dead, that's when our sins got bloody clean. We're no longer a thieving murderer. <laughs> when Jesus Christ hung himself on the cross, right? He basically took the lives we're living right now. And when he resurrected from the dead, when God, the father, look at us, guess what he see? He see the life that Jesus Christ walked. So stop walking around and talking like you that person, like you that guy. You're not. You never will be. You're going to find yourself in hell. Run to the foot of the cross. Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I say every day, I just lie. I lie maybe four times a day. You probably done told 20 lies this year already. You lie every day. I don't know. I lie. Some of y'all even want to lie. Man, I should have lied. You think, you think it's a game to lie. I should have just lied. <laughs> if I just tell a lie, I'll be all right. <laughs> uh-uh, it don't work that way. We need Jesus Christ. Keep your faith in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Romans 3 and 25 says, keep your faith in the what? Keep your faith in the blood, the blood of Christ. Jesus, that is. Y'all understand me? Stop putting your faith in things that ain't going to benefit you. Oh, I got my faith. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a big house. You ain't. You ain't have you got it? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm gonna put my faith in this. I'm gonna put my faith in. No, the Bible says in Romans chapter three and twenty five. Put your faith in the blood of Christ. Jesus says, "Stop praying. Stop. Don't you think you're more precious than the birds? God, feed the birds. Why are you praying for for food and shelter?" That's a dumb prayer. Why are you praying for shelter and food? When God, when Jesus say, your father in heaven know you need somewhere, somewhere to lay and, and, and clothes to put on. He feeds the birds of the sky. Ain't you better than them? Keep your faith in the blood of Christ, not his fantastic attributes. Yes, he's fantastic. Yes, he can do whatever. Yes, he can raise the dead. Yes, he can do all these different things. Absolutely. But Jesus did those miracles and signs to prove to the Jews that he is the son of the living God. Not for you to read it and take it and think that you can do it. Because you can't. You're not God. <laughs> all right. Now then. Who got questions? This ain't no game. This ain't no, you know, well, I don't believe in that Jesus. You're going to be in hell. Some people, listen to me. Some people are just temporary loved ones on this earth, and that's it. Some people, some people will never put their faith in this, and you're going to know it. So you pray for them. 
but also accept this fact too. This the only doggone friendship, this the only companionship that you will ever have with them. Just this, this little small temporary time. <laughs> That's why it's important for all Christians, all of us, to be ministers of Christ and managers of the mysteries of God. It's our responsibility to go out in the world and teach them about Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Not teach them about get some money, put in an offering, and, and, and God gonna manifest it to a million dollars. And you the duck that quack can do it. Huh? You think you can put some money in an offering and then God gonna take the money and make you a millionaire? You a duck. That ain't what the scripture teach. The scripture teach for you to put your faith in what Jesus did on the cross so we might have eternal life. The Bible says that our rewards are stored in heaven. The Bible says we are spiritually blessed. See what I'm saying? This ain't no capital gain for me, y'all. This class is not church. I never get invited to a church teaching this. I'm going to run the members off. I ain't going to make them feel good. You're not supposed to feel good when you're when you a bad person and you open up God's word, which is good. You're supposed to feel bad and convicted. The Bible's supposed to mirror and show you how terrible you are. Not what you can get out of it for your... I'm, hey. 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 <laughs> hey. <laughs> Y'all better leave me alone. Stop disrespecting my Savior. All right. Let's get into the studies. All right, viewers. Let's go. We're talking about the end days of our lives. The binding of Satan for a thousand years. The binding of Satan for a thousand years, all right? Remember, we read in Revelation 1 through 20 that the devil had to be binded for a thousand years and thrown into the abyss or the bottomless pit, right? right. Go back to my Facebook timeline and watch part one of this. That way you can pick up where we left off at. Well, pick up. Where we're going to start at right now. All right. We're talking about how Jesus Christ been binding up Satan. Right? Sometimes we read the scripture, oh, the devil was binded up. He's gonna be binded up for a thousand years. Did you know that Jesus Christ been binding up Satan since he's been here? He's been binding up Satan since he's been here. Not just a thousand years. He's been doing this. He did it in the garden with Adam and Eve, binding them up then. <laughs> he did it in the garden. <laughs> I just feel like saying that word again, God. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> huh? He been binding up Satan. He ain't just, he did, this is not his first time binding up Satan in Revelation. Remember, we read in Mark chapter 3 and 27. What we read? The strong man, say it on the mic. Read, read that verse for me, Joshua. Mark chapter 3 and 27. Let's kind of catch the viewers up. What did Jesus say? Let's hear it. Mark chapter 3, verse 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. You see that? Jesus said no man can enter into a strong man's house unless he what? Bind them up first. You can't come up in my house and think you finna spoil my goods. You got to bind me up first. You got to handle me first. You got to deal with the strong man. Then once you deal with the strong man, then you can start, you understand me, having the goods. You understand? So Jesus said, no, I've I, I been binding him up. Don't you think this is the first time I'm binding him up? And Jesus Christ so cold, watch this. He been telling the devil his whole plan since the beginning of the Bible on how he gonna bind them up. So it ain't like God did this in secret or he was hiding his master plan on binding the devil up. Uh-uh. He showed them in advance. 
and the devil still failed. Still getting bonded up for a thousand years. Why? It's because the devil is the father of lies. So every time you tell a lie, guess what you're doing? You're saying, Daddy Devil, here I am. Every time you lie, the, the devil is your daddy. Every time. The Bible says the devil is the father of lies. So if you lie, guess what that means? That's your father. Congratulations. I just, I should have lied. Some of y'all just, oh, I just, I, I just should have lied. Call on your daddy. Call him up. You want to lie. I want to lie. Forget this. <laughs> you want that devil, don't you? <laughs> huh? So, we're going to go. We're going to continue on where we were talking about how the shepherds, you know, was announced to Jesus Christ astronomically, right? God put a star in, in the sky and the shepherds saw the star all over the east. They saw this star and they knew about this prophecy. God didn't hide Christ's birth. The devil, which is a strong man, right, which the one that's being bonded, he could have stopped the plan. You understand me? These same shepherds, guess what they did? They went to see the baby Jesus, right? Now, a baby can't do nothing. Jesus is a baby. He's a human. So don't think that Jesus could have got up as a little small baby and handled these grown men. And wrong. If them men would have found the baby Jesus Christ, guess what would have happened? They would have took him out. But God's so good. He's so beyond our intelligence. Our intellect can't even, even comprehend how good he is. Like we can't even think on, on the capacity of the measure of how good God is. Our minds are too carnal. You hear me? Like even Jesus had to grow in knowledge and stature. Jesus himself had to grow in knowledge. And you think you got it? You ain't good. That's why you think that way. You don't run to Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. You don't point everything to Christ Jesus. You point it to you. You lying, thieving, murder, adultery. Oh, I ain't, I'm good. I ain't never had sex before. I'm, I'm good. I'm still a virgin. I've been waiting. I waited 20 years before I got, you understand me? Liar. You're a liar. I don't care because you didn't physically have sex. If you did it in your heart, Jesus said, you're an adulterer. You're a fornicator. If you did it in the heart. <laughs> now watch this. Y'all want to know the cold thing about how good God is? Let's say you didn't. Let's say you didn't do the uh, anger at your brother. And you ain't. Did, you ain't never stole nothing. Guess what? Let's just say you did one lie. Guess what that means? The Bible says you guilty of all of them. So you still can't run. <laughs> if you do one lie and you ain't done nothing else, guess what? You guilty of all of the uh, uh, murdering and all them thieving. You just a part of them. All y'all gonna be in the same pot boiling. On high. <laughs> Kosher salt. Cracked black peppercorn. <laughs> huh? Rosemary and thyme. Huh? Oops, I can't believe it's all, it's not butter. Oh my god. All that gonna be in that pot. <laughs> so watch this. These same shepherd went to see the baby Jesus, and then they told, watch this, many others what they had seen and heard. So these shepherds told everybody what they seen and heard. So the devil know this plan. Remember, the devil know the Bible backwards and forward. Jesus shot some script. The devil shot some scriptures at Jesus. Jesus shot him back. The devil shot him back. They were just shooting scriptures backwards and forward. 
<laughs> Let's go to Luke chapter 15, verse 20. Luke chapter 15, verse 20, KJV. We're talking about the end days of our lives, the binding of Satan for a thousand years. And what I'm doing now is I'm showing you how Jesus been binding up Satan, been binding them up. All right. Luke 15, Luke chapter 2, 15 through 20, it reads. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven. The shepherds said one to another, let us go even unto Bethlehem. And see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had and, the, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them, which was told them concerning this child. And all they had, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they heard and seen. And it was told unto them. Y'all see that? I mean, it was announced. It was announced. The whole region was, hey, there's something going on. There's a king being born. So the devil knew that Jesus Christ was born. So he had the whole answer key in his hand. He knew the answer before the question was even brought. And dude still failed. The strong man still failed. Jesus still bonded him up. God ordained an astronomical event to broadcast the news of Jesus Christ being born. As far as, listen, this is how far away he was. From Bethlehem, all the way to Persia. That's how the, the, the astronomical stars glazed in the brightness illuminated in the night sky. It was bold and bright. The sky was dried up like grapes. That star was bold and brilliant and, and, and sunglass worthy at night. And it shone from Bethlehem all the way to Persia. When you have time, Google the distance from Bethlehem to Persia. That's how bright that light was. So God put an astronomical event in the sky to take place to let that whole region know my son is born. And the devil saw that, saw that star. <laughs> he knew about it. But yet the strong man, a.k.a. Satan, could not take out Jesus Christ. Let's read about this. Let's go to Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Y'all ready? All right. It reads. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. God wasn't hiding, God wasn't hiding this major event. God told the devil in the book of Genesis chapter 3 and 15. About the seed of the woman. It's going to crush his head. Remember we went over that last time. Go back to my Facebook timeline and watch part one of the end days of our lives. The binding of Satan for a thousand years. We talked about that already. Right? So. Matt say. 2,192 kilometers. 26 hour trip via car. No whips back then. <laughs> So that's like driving from here, from Dallas, Texas, all the way past San Francisco, California. That's how bright that star was. If, if you ever drove from Dallas to California, from Dallas to San Francisco, you know the true distance. 
Huh? So the devil had all this time to get to that baby. God get exposed. Huh, you can have my playbook. My son binding you up. <clears throat> you can have it. Don't worry. He bind you up as a baby. Yeah. <laughs> Satan clearly knew all the above facts related to the birth of Christ. Satan is an intelligent being. You can't outsmart him. Matter of fact, he got y'all so ducked and tricked. It's ridiculous. Even one for Christ Jesus, we'll all be deceived. The Bible says even the elect will be deceived if Jesus Christ don't shorten the days. We can't outsmart the devil. We can't outtrick him. We can't outmanipulate him. We can't outlie him. You hear me? We need Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Counselor, the Prince of Peace, the King of Kings, the Alpha and Omega, the Aleph and the Taf, huh? the Bread of Life. We need him to atone for our sins. And watch this. Put something in us that's greater than what's in the world. What's that? The Holy Spirit. The Bible says, once you believe, once you hear, once you hear the word of truth, what's the word of truth? The gospel of your salvation. What's the gospel? Jesus died on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures. The Bible says, once you hear that word of truth, and that's the gospel of our salvation. The Bible says the moment you believe that what you heard, you are then sealed with the promised Holy Spirit. You are sealed. No one has to lay hands on you. You don't got to get baptized in no water. None of that. Believe in what Jesus did. That's it. Have faith in the blood of Christ. That is it. Nothing else. Nothing else. It's that simple. It's that simple. Why is it that simple, Landon? Because Jesus Christ did it out of the work for us. So we don't got to do it. Now, do that mean I can just walk and do whatever I want? No. That's not what I'm telling you. Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. What's the commandment? I'm going to wrap it up in one commandment. Treat people the way you want to be treated. That's it. Love your neighbor like thyself. That's it. If you do that one thing, you, you fulfilling all the commandments. Man, I'm going to treat my uncle how I would want to be treated. <laughs> That's easy. How's that hard? How's that hard? I'm going to treat my spouse how I want to be treated. <laughs> That's easy. But the moment you get angry at your brother or sister, guess what you have done? You committed murder. You murderer. Now you're back on this side. <laughs> Y'all understand me? So Satan clearly knew about all the above facts I just said related to the birth of Christ. He also had many ways of murder at his disposal. He had many ways, Joe. He could have murdered them. He had many disposal disposals, a way he can, uh, uh, you know, go this way, go that way to knock them off. You understand me? The devil was right there when he was born. The Bible describes the devil as a dragon waiting before the woman to devour her child at birth. He was waiting. If you was waiting for something, that means you what? You already knew about it. Hey, they're on their way home. All right, I'm going to meet them there. I'm going to wait for them here. Why am I waiting? Because I know they're on their way home. So dude already knew about Christ being born because God gave him the plan. He ain't hiding. We're talking about the end days of our lives, the binding of Satan for a thousand years, and Jesus been binding the strong man, Satan. So he was right there waiting before the woman to devour 
her child at birth. Let's read about that. Let's go to Revelation chapter 12 and 4. Revelations chapter 12 and 4. Are y'all ready? All right, it reads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. Watch this. And the dragon, who's the dragon? Huh? The devil. Watch this. And the dragon stood before the woman. Who's the woman? Israel. The woman is not the Virgin Mary. All right? The woman is Israel, the nation, okay? It's not the Virgin Mary. I know they teach you that, but they didn't rightly divide the word like it says in 2 Timothy 2 and 15. That woman is Israel. Do y'all got that? And the dragon stood before the woman. So let me just say it like this. And Satan stood before Israel, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child, as soon as it was as it was born. Lawrence said, Israel, that's right. So he was ready, um, Veronica Ann, to devour the child. You understand that, Veronica Ann? <laughs> now let me ask y'all this. This should have been an easy kill for the for the devil, ain't it? Should have been an easy kill. Huh? Should have been. Right? He had the plan. He knew that he knew about it. He had the answer key. He he was so ready. He was there waiting. Satan should have been able to prevent the birth and the survival of Jesus Christ. But he couldn't. He couldn't. Why? Why y'all think the devil couldn't do it? Say in the mic. I think the devil couldn't. <laughs> I think the devil couldn't do it because he don't have enough power. Because he don't have enough power? The devil just like us? All right. Cut the mic song. Why couldn't the devil devour or take out Jesus Christ, knowing the plan, knowing all this, why he couldn't take him out when he was a baby? I heard your answer, Alexis. The devil is not like us, by the way. He's way stronger. Oh, he can do something. He can most definitely do something. Why? Um, I think because uh, God is powerful i mean god can turn bad into good and it's just god we're talking about god's plan we're not talking about the devil all right there you go that's what i wonder can nobody inf infiltrate god's plan what god say that's what that is i don't care what the situation is yeah jesus christ was a, a baby yeah it was the devil the highest strongest angel ever made ever created Yes, he was standing at the door waiting for Christ to be born. And yes, he failed. <laughs> Why? Because God, what God say, that's what it is. God was, look, look watch this. This is how good God is. Y'all ready? God was able to use mortal humans, mortal humans to outwhisk to outplay, to outjuke the mighty strong man, Satan. It was Mary and Joseph, humans, that took care of Christ. <laughs> you understand me? Y'all hear me? The angel came to Joseph in the dream, get up. They're trying to come get him. Get up. Let's go. Came to him in a dream. Get up. Hey, let's go. They're trying to get him. 
Come on, get up. They're trying to take out Christ. Get up. <laughs> huh? Same thing like he did with Lot. If Joseph wouldn't have got up and took his family, guess what? God would have probably sent angels down. Come. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> you hear me? Jesus been binding up Satan, y'all. He been binding them up. He just didn't bind them up in Revelations in, in the 20th chapter for a thousand years in the bottom of the, in the bottomless pit. Uh-uh. He been binding them up. This is how much Jesus bound up the strong man, right? And binding up, we're talking about binding him up in his house. His house is the world. You understand me? So this world we live in, not the earth. The earth belongs to the king. But the world, meaning the systems, the governments, how, how it runs, the structure, right? Oh, devil, the devil's the prince of that world. He's a strong man. Jesus Christ himself stated that he's not of this world. His kingdom is not of this world. He said, if it was, do you think my servants will allow them to get me? Not at all. <laughs> not at all. We're going to be your standing me. Let's go. Y'all ready? <laughs> Hiding behind Christ. Get him. <laughs> huh? This is how much Jesus bound up the strong man. To this day, y'all ready? To this day, Jesus came to his house, which is the world. Jesus was born in this world. And guess what he did? Put Jesus on this side. And guess what Jesus did? He plundered. He plundered what? What did he plunder? When Jesus came into the strong man's house, the strong man meaning Satan, when Jesus came to his house, what did Jesus do? He plundered his what? His goods. He plundered his goods. You understand me? So Jesus kicked the front door in into his house, looked around, yeah, I'm going to give you my action plan on how I'm going to plunder your goods, and you still not going to stop me. Strong man, I'm going to bind you up. Ain't that something? I think y'all missing that. I'm going to give you the answer key to the test. Hero, you can have it. But you still going to fail. You, you, you see how we can't, we can't grasp that? Y'all see that? I'm going to give you, the, huh, okay, it's a three-question three test. It's only two answers, A and B. All the answers are A. Here you go. <laughs> and you still gonna fail. <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't get that, can we? The devil really thought that he could stop God's plan. That's why he was waiting at the door. He was waiting for Israel to drop her kid. Oh, I won't worry about it. Go and drop. I'm waiting here, waiting at the door. And Christ still was born and lived. <laughs> to this day, Jesus Christ came to his house and plundered his goods. Then watch this. After he plundered, after Jesus Christ plundered his goods, the strong man, me binding them up, right? Guess what he didn't do? He spat in his face directly. You know what I mean? He spit on him. He spit right in his face. Jesus Christ went into the house of the strong man. He bonded him up first. After he bonded him up, he plundered his goods. And after he was done plundering his goods, guess what he did? He spat on him. All right, Elena, how did Jesus spit in the devil's face? This is how he did it when he empowered his disciples to cast out demons. <laughs> ah. Some mere humans was able to 
be empowered by Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, to go and cast out the super intelligent demons. Not only am I going to bind you up, but your love, your, your kids, your love, your partners. I'm going to cast them out too. Matter of fact, I ain't going to be the one to do it all the time. I'm going to let them do it. The ones that lie and thieve and all them. The ones that commit all these lies and stealing. I'm going to have them do it. <laughs> what, what, what Jesus means, you kick me out of heaven because I, I, you understand me, I seen it. But you're going to let these liar, thieving, murderers because I'm going to spit in your face. I'm going to plunder your goods. I'm going to bind up you, you strong man, in your own house. Jesus Christ been binding up Satan. We're talking about the end days of our lives, the binding of Satan for a thousand years. He been binding them up. He empowered his disciples to go out and cast out demons. That's a spit in the face. Not look, not God. God empowered the mere mortals. Human us, the liars. <laughs> And, and Jesus, Jesus, he probably told him, and you bet not touch him. Because you know he wanted to. He couldn't touch him. Because the strong man got binded up by the king. Further demonstrating the loss of Satan's authority. The question, Matt says, why do humans think they can cast out demons today? I have no idea. I have no idea. What humans need to think of is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Because in Scripture, they thought they can cast out a demon because they seen Paul do it, which is an apostle, which Jesus empowered to do, right? The apostles, the 12, not you, not me, them, right? And they thought they could do the same thing the apostle did and cast out demons, right? And guess what happened to that person trying to cast out that demon? That demon said, I know Jesus Christ. I know Paul, but I don't know you. <laughs> and guess what that demon did? Jumped out of that one person and jumped on them. And he ran around the city naked. <laughs> you better keep your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ and stop trying to act like you this hero, like you can do something because you can't. You better hide behind the cross. You better bury yourself in the cross of Jesus, the blood. You better go back diving. You better run to the cross. Better run. If you ain't got no legs, you better hip it. You better figure out a way to get there. If you ain't got no legs or no arms, you better flop. <laughs> you better run to the cross. <laughs> you hear me? You better stop playing. <laughs> this furthermore demonstrates the loss of Satan's authority when Jesus Christ empowers his disciples to cast out demons. That's a spit in the face. That's binding the strong man. Let's read about it. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. This is class. This is not church. Devin, read this for me. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. KJV. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. You see that? He called his disciples over and gave them power. I mean, they didn't have the power in them. They didn't have that power. They was given that power by Jesus Christ himself. Y'all see that? 
he gave his disciples that you see the 12. He said, then he called the 12 disciples together. He didn't say you. He didn't say he called you over there. He said the 12 disciples. That's what the Bible say. Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh so he can destroy the works of the devil. Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh so he can destroy the works of the devil. A lot of times when we read manifested in the flesh, they always take it back to making this some argument about God's triune nature. You know what I mean? They always take it back to a modalism or, or trinity or, or something. Right? But let's just read the scripture let all of us be liars, because that's what we are, right? Thank God for the blood of Jesus. I'm not boasting about our sins. I'm boasting about what Jesus Christ did for us on the cross to wipe away our sins. You understand that? That's why I can't go to God and say, man, Lord, I'm happy I'm not like my nephew and then my kids and my, my friends. I'm happy I'm not like them. I'm happy I'm not out here doing this and doing that. I'm glad I'm not like them. Y'all heard, heard the pride in that? Like I done did something. I ain't done nothing. My prayer? Lord, I just, I just thank you for your son, Jesus. I am a sinner. I violate every day. And I know it takes only one for me to be guilty of everything. So I can't fix my, my mind or my mouth to speak anything outside of thank you, Lord Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins according to the scriptures and being buried. And rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And when you did that, Lord, you have now made me right. And I am now right through you. Because of your blood, I now have eternal life. I'm free. And I hope that you keep giving me the ability to teach the gospel and share the gospel. So... It won't just be me, you, and the Father and the Holy Spirit together. Maybe, it can, maybe we can get two or three more people out of the situation. <laughs> maybe we can get three or four more people out of the situation. So only eight got saved during Noah's time. All the millions of people, eight got saved. So don't talk like God ain't used to saving a handful of folks. Sodom and Gomorrah, when they destroyed that gate town, Four people got saved. Then one of them died because they wanted to go back, turn to a pillar of salt. So really only three got saved out of them millions of people. <laughs> you hear me? So Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh so he can destroy the works of the devil by binding him up. Y'all understand? So he can enter the strong man's house and spoil his goods. <laughs> spoil his goods. Y'all understand me? Let's read about that. Because y'all don't think Jesus was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil. Let's go to 1 John 3 and 8. 1 John 3 and 8. Spoil his goods. First John 3 and 8. Y'all ready? It reads, He that committed sin is of the devil. Uh-oh. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Ain't that what it say? <laughs> so now you know why Jesus Christ was manifested in the flesh to destroy the works of the devil, to bind the strong man, to plunder his goods, to spit on them. 
You can't do nothing to me. I created you. And I'm going to take something that's a little lower than you and stomp you with it and crush your head. And guess what that, guess what that person is? Jesus Christ. I'll put an S. He was made a little lower than the angels. The devil's an angel. So I mean, Jesus Christ was made lower than the devil when he was manifested in the flesh. But his faith, I'll get to that later. Go to my Facebook timeline. Now go to my YouTube channel and watch the faith of Jesus Christ versus the faith in Jesus Christ. I was good. There's three videos, three teachers on that. And you know that this world is Satan's house because Jesus called the devil the prince of this world. Jesus Christ called the devil the prince of this world. What, a, what is a prince? What is the prince? The next to be king? What, a, what, what authority do a prince have? So the prince don't have authority? The prince have all the authority. Where he say goes, the only person that can override him is the king. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Do y'all agree with that? Yeah. Matt say one below the king. That's right. The only one that can override the prince is the king. And watch this. The prince is always in line with the king. The son is always in line with the dad. So what the son, what the prince doing is what the king would do. The prince don't rebel against the king. Have you ever heard of that before? The prince battles the king. <laughs> Y'all ever heard that? Jesus said that the devil is the prince of this world. If you are the prince, then for sure this is your house. You run this place. Do you agree with that? So you walking around thinking you got this fancy this, fancy that. You think your future is bright or your present time is bright. But you got to remember that you are operating in the devil's kingdom, in his world. This is his house. Only one man was able to bind that strong man. That's Jesus Christ. Why do you think there's no justification in this world today? People out here getting killed and murdered. Black boys getting shot down and gunned down by cops. White people doing the same thing to what blacks. Blacks doing the same thing to whites. Whites doing it to each other. Blacks doing it to each other. Everybody hating everybody. Why? Why ain't no justice being served? <laughs> huh? You want me to tell you why? Because ain't none of us good. Only God is good. And when you're good, you what? You just. God is going to deal with your non-good tail. You want justice from God, but if God gives you justice, guess what's going to happen to the world? We all going to die. Because ain't none of us good. We all are liars. So if you want justice from God, man, why God won't intervene and stop this? All right. If God intervened and stopped it, guess what? Everything going to stop. That means you're going to die right along with the problem that you see going on. That's how good God is. And he knows that. So he sent his son and took all his wrath and his punishment out on his son who was innocent. He didn't do nothing, nephew. He was innocent. That's, that's love. <laughs> Forget about what everybody got to say. That's love. You hear me? Let's read John 16 and 11. John 16 and 11. So we can read and understand that Jesus Christ is the prince of this world. I mean, um, the devil is the prince 
of this world. John 16 and 11. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Let's hear it. John 16 and 11. Judgment because the prince of the, I mean, of this world is judge. <laughs> Jesus say of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Jesus called the strong man, Satan, called him a prince. Do you think you can override the prince? You think because you are isolated or you so intelligent or because you have hormones, Right? and you want to have intercourse, or you think you can't be told nothing, or you know what's best for you, don't you know that you are falling into the prince of this world trap? The plan that matters is God's plan. That's why he sent his son. And the moment you deviate or derail or detour from this plan, guess what? You don't. You're doomed. Your plan will not survive. I don't care who it come from, where it go, it don't matter. It will fail. The only plan that matters is Jesus Christ and the plan that God gave through his son. You find your purpose and plan under the direction of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Do y'all understand? Who got questions? Who got questions? All right, so that, that lets me know y'all understand. Give me two people to tell me what, what it is y'all understand. And not girls. No girls. Give me two people at the mic and tell me what it is that you understand. You said you had, there was no, no questions, so that lets me know you understand. So what it is that you understand? Males. Males. Let's cut the mic on. Oh, you got a question? All right, well, cut, there it is. Come on out of there then. Cut the mic on. Say if I, like, murder people or steal stuff, but, like, towards at the end of my life, I believe in the death, burial, resurrection. Does that mean I'm saved? The question is, if you was a, 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 a criminal your whole life, right, and at the end of your life, you decide to put your faith truly from the heart in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, will you be saved? Absolutely. You want an example of that? You want an example? It's in the Bible. No, not Paul. It was a thief. He was a criminal his whole life. Actually, he was sentenced to death. He was on his deathbed. And he was hanging on the cross next to Jesus Christ, condemned to death and crucifixion. Right? His whole life, he was a thief. He was a criminal. He was hanging on the cross about to die with Christ. It was two of them. One of them, if you are the son of God, get yourself off the cross. So you know where he at. Because no one atoned for his thieving habits. He didn't put his faith in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. He thought he did the right thing. Huh? They wouldn't have questioned him. So you know where he at. But the other one, the same criminal that's on his deathbed, he say, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. He said, don't y'all hear him praying for y'all? He's done nothing. Me and this guy, we, our punishment is just. He ain't done nothing. Then he turned around and looked at Christ on his deathbed. Lord, if you be willing, remember me in your kingdom. And guess what? Guess what Jesus said? He said, today. He didn't say next week. He said, today, you will be with me in paradise. 
So yes, to answer your question, absolutely. We got a question. Um, you said earlier that there's no man, um, particularly a prince, doesn't go against this king. Right. And um, there is one instance where that happened. Okay. It was David and his son, his prince, went against him to reign over him. That's right. Shalisha, she got a thumbs up. Well, I got to verify that, Veronica. I got I have to verify that. Typically, you don't see princes trying to override kings. So that had to be verified. I had to look at look at that and see. Could be true. Could be wrong. We'll see. But that was a good comment. All right. Now let's go back to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. All right, y'all ready? Let's read. Revelation chapter 20, verse 1. It reads, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. Y'all see that? This is when the angel's getting ready to bound up Satan for a thousand years, right? I got a question. I don't have a comment. I got a question. What is this key and where did it come from? Veronica Ann, I'm talking to Veronica now. What, where is this key? What is this key and where did it come from? Because we were talking about princes don't typically override the kings, but you made a joke, do diligence to go try to find and see if a prince override this king. So now I need to see what. Well, it took a while to say something about that. Because I was trying to look up the name of the son. So what is this key? And where did it come from? From heaven. Um, I believe it came. It was one of the angels had the key, and I believe John. No, yes, John was up there. What is this key, and where did it come from? Matt said from the from. keeper. Trelisha says Revelation is real. So Veronica, I'm asking you, heaven. from heaven, Rome. Are there other mentions, Veronica, in scripture, right? About this key to the bottomless pit? It is? What do you mean? Nah, we got a, we got a, yes. All right, we got a question. Um, it's kind of off topic, but on topic at the same time. Is the abyss and the bottomless pit the same thing absolutely the abyss and the bottomless pit is the exact same thing absolutely bottomless pit means abyss that's what it means are there other mentions in scripture about the key to the bottomless pit absolutely hold on bro you had something you have a comment you sure because i got questions for you yeah, I do. So in this context, the angel had a key. Yes. Go to the mic. So in, in Revelation chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Excellent. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Greek word for key 
in this context, the Greek word for key in this context is kleis. Kleis. Y'all see that? Kleis. That's spelled K L E I S. Kleis. Okay? And this word means a key. Right? Literally or what? Figuratively. Bring her in. What that mean? What that mean? A key, literally or figuratively. What does that mean? Turn the mic on. Literally or figuratively. Right. Uh, it's a key. Right. It's a Actual key. Actual okay. key. That's literally. But what about figuratively? Something that seals something, Say closes again? it up. Something that locks it up, closes it up. Okay. Help her out. Uh, it can either be a physical key or a, um, like. Veronica Ann, the, the Greek word for key in this context means kleis. Okay. It means a key. Literally or figuratively. Okay. We know what it means literally, but what could it mean figuratively? Like, almost like if someone was to say like the key to your heart kind of thing. Like it's not actually a key, it's figuratively. So it's not a physical key, it's just a way to... Yeah. Uh, a way to open something, unlock something new. Metaphorically, okay, in the New Testament, key, this is what it means. It denotes power and authority. Key, figuratively or metaphorically in the New Testament, when you see the word key, it denotes or represents authority and what? Power. All right. So David's son, the prince, right? He didn't want to what? He didn't want to. He, he didn't want to give up the power. The son wanted the the key. That's called Kleis. Y'all understand? So when we read that scripture, and it says, "I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key." of the bottomless pit, he's not literally talking about a key. He's talking about, he saw an angel coming down from heaven with power and authority over the bottomless pit or the abyss. It's not an actual key. This is the same key that David's son which will be the prince, which I haven't read yet, right? Will go to take from his, his dad. So when this angel came down from heaven having the key to the bottomless pit, it means he had the authority or power over the abyss. Or the bottom of this pit. Do y'all understand? Not an actual key. So let's go over some verses in the New Testament. 
scriptures describing the same key in the context of power and authority. Y'all ready? Darion out of the red one. Let's read it again. Let, let Darion read Revelation chapter 9 and 1. Revelation chapter 9 and 1. And it reads, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. Excellent. That's a representation of he was giving power and authority to the bottomless pit. Who gave him that authority and power? Jesus Christ. Let's read another one. Let's go to Matthew 16 and 19. Matthew 16 and 19. All right, you reading that? Let's hear it. I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose. Excellent. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. He's not talking about a bunch of janitorial keys that them, jan them janitors be having. Uh-uh. He's talking about, I will give you the keys, the authority and power of the kingdom of heaven. With that power, guess what they can do? It said in the scripture. With this power, they can do what? Uh-uh. What's that, Veronica? And? Whatsoever they shall bind. So with this power, they can bind. Which is the same binding power Jesus Christ been doing to Satan from the beginning. Which is the same binding power that's used to bind Satan up for a thousand years. So in order to bind up Satan for a thousand years, there has to be a key present, and that key that the angel had to bind him up is power and authority. Do you understand? Also, it was stated that the angel had a great chain in his hand. Right? This angel also needed this great chain to bind up Satan. So he had to have power and authority which is the key. And he also needed a great chain as well. Right? To bind up Satan. What is this chain and why does it have to be a great chain? Why couldn't it be a regular chain? We're going to stop there. Tune in part three. Part three, we're going to go over why? Why is this great chain needed? Why? What is it? We're going to stop the great chain, put it on the board. Great chain. Why? Why? That'll be part three. Who got questions? Who got questions? This class is not church. This conclude Bible study today on the end days of our lives, the binding of Satan for a thousand years, part two. Who got questions? If you don't have questions, I'm going to think you, you got it understood. Then I'm going to request for you to tell me what it is that you understand. Does anybody have questions? Viewers, no questions? Joseph? Nobody? 
All right. Keep your faith in the blood of Christ. What's the blood of Christ? Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's all that matter. I'm going to let y'all make it. <laughs> may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, may the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all for now and forever, and the grace of God. Until next time.